guys, good to see you again. Welcome to this new lesson and this new subject. Subject we got study now is biblical preaching, and uh, it is a very exciting book because it will teach you a lot of practical skills how to prepare a sermon, how to study the text, and how to apply it. And that is one of our public functions as leaders is we have the great opportunity and uh, responsibility and the anointing upon our lives to share the word of God publicly with other people. Two main places where we preach is sometimes we preach in public and it become more and more challenging in these days after the coronavirus to find opportunities to preach the gospel like when I used to be a student we used to go to different villages in Africa and then we invite everybody and then we gather them together in big open spaces and then we would preach the gospel to them and tell them about the beautiful story of the Bible and of Jesus Christ and then we would invite them to accept Christ and uh, that is really excited if you still have that opportunity to share the gospel in that way we will teach you in this session how to do that and then of course the biggest portion of our preaching is in the churches where we preach to our congregation as pastors and that is a wonderful testimony and a wonderful experience and remember that your walk with God will determine the depth of your preaching. Some people are naturally great uh, public speakers and they can stand up and they can applaud to uh, audiences and people listen to them and they are excellent in speaking. But in order to be a good preacher, you need the skills and the techniques how to convey a good message. And you'll remember the right first lesson uh, we've looked at teaching principles and those principles you need to apply in order to convey a message in such a way that people will understand. Second of all, you really need the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And if you walk with God in your private life, you will manifest in your public life. So you'll never be able to go beyond your personal walk with God. And that is very important for you as a pastor to walk privately before God and find your uh, anointing with God. It's like having a motor car with a big engine like a V12 engine. And it is immense power and can uh, come to great speed but if you don't put petrol in the tank that beautiful engine cannot reach its optimal speed and so is with us there's lots of aspects we can be gifted as a as a public speaker but in order to convey the message we need certain skills to convey the word of God to people and then we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit so there's a lot of powers at work. There's natural talents, there's learned talents, and there is supernatural powers at work as we preach. And this is what I'm going to teach you, and we are going to study that. And you will have some examples and some practice in your class. So I want to encourage the teacher to set aside some time in your sessions together where the students are going to prepare a sermon and then you're gonna give them feedback you see if we don't get feedback on how we preach how can we improve because we have this beautiful gift of God the Word of God which we want to convey and bring over to people in a way they can understand and the way it can touch their lives and their lives can be transformed into the image of Christ and that is our calling so we're going to have a wonderful time together and I pray that God's Spirit will enlighten your mind and that you're able to grasp all the uh, content of what 
I'm going to teach you so that you can be effective and powerful preachers that change your congregations and your congregations will then change the places where God have put them. So on Sunday you preach to the people but during the week they take that message and they go and live it among their workplaces, their families. So the message is then turned into the lives of each people to go and bear fruit to the place where God have called them. So God called you to look after the people and the people also have responsibility and have to be stewards of the word of God, not just to be hearers who deceive themselves and not just be hearers to receive the word of God and take it for themselves, but to take it into their congregation and that is their workplace. So we are in page on page one, the apostolic preaching. And in this session, we are going to do the introduction. And then we're going to delve into the different ways of preaching. And I'm going to teach you some techniques, how to study the word of God. And we are going to go through a lot of samples in the class so that you can start and understand how it should be done. So this course is an overview of practical task of sermon creation. Sermon creation, that is uh, the key word there. It involves interpreting the scripture and then shaping that study in a fashion that's preached sermons that are biblically accurate, that's important, that's Christ-centered, and it is motivating. So the goal is faith, repentance, and obedience. That is in very short. So. Uh, you've done the course Bible survey, so you have to bring that book along. You have done biblical interpretation, bring that book along. And then while we go through the book of preaching, we will use those books of references as you're going to do some practical work in the class. So interpret the word of God is uh, number two there. Focus on the past. Past means what have happened before and what have happened before is God spoke in many ways through many books and it is written down in the Bible and we have to delve into that to find that which God have revealed to the original authors from Moses the book of Genesis to the Apostle John in the book of Revelations is this book we call the Bible, which is the Word of God, it's inspired by God, it is trustworthy, it is useful for teaching, and it is our only source of divine truth which we can build on. So that we need to learn and understand what was written there, and then how do we apply that which have God revealed to the authors of the Bible, how can we apply that? And that is the two main parts of sermon preparation and preaching. Is studying what is it meant originally. You remember the different literary styles, poetry, prophetic writings, the Gospels, the, the letters of Paul, all different literary styles. And each one have unique methods of interpretation. So that you're going to apply that. And then you remember the Bible survey. We went through the Bible very fast and very quickly to give you the overview. But by now you probably would have read the whole Bible. So you have done your homework. You've read through the Bible and now you are ready to preach. And it's important. We are God's instruments and God, if entrusted us this task and responsibility to speak his word into the lives of our congregation. There, uh, number three, it reminds us that we must use the Bible survey and the Bible interpretation. And you should have done those courses before you do preaching. Otherwise, you will not understand what we refer to. So what is the objective? There's three major objectives. The first one is to study and interpret scripture and have a Christ-centered application 
in your current preaching context. How is this uplifted Christ? Remember Jesus said, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. So one of our responsibilities is to uplift the glorified, resurrected Christ in the midst of the people. And as we lift him up, he will draw people unto us. So that's also a strategy for church growth. The more we uplift and glorify Christ, he will entrust people unto us. Secondly, understand the practical topics of explanative, redemptive themes, illustrations, applications, is ingredients to a Christ-centered sermon. So there's steps. Explanation, what is explaining the scripture to the people. There's some major topical themes which we have done in theology, or if you haven't done theology, we're going to study biblical theology, we're going to do theology of Christ, theology of God, theology of the Holy Spirit, uh, and the Christ-centered life. All those will give you major themes. And then you have to learn how to take all these ingredients and put them together in a sermon which you are going to preach. So the foundational concepts to understand how Christ is the center of the Bible story and the appropriate focus of every sermon. And then there's a warning, our preaching must not be legalistic or moralistic, but motivate people how to believe the gospel and obey it. And there is some acknowledgement of Reverend Jim Whittle, who was an author and these notes were compiled through him, so may God bless him. So, on page number two, some background for you to understand preaching the good news. So the preacher is a herald, the one who announces the good news. So there is two major Greek words which we're going to uh, explain to you. And the first one is angelizo, or plainly preaching the gospel. So angelizo which means announcing the good news. And that is, Jesus said, I came to bring you the good news. Repent and believe the gospel. The gospel is good news. It is not a philosophy. It's not insight. It's not the opinion. It's not, uh, it's not principles we need to obey. It's not historical context. It must be in the theme of the good news. We can read 1 Timothy there, 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 and 6, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. And then 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 said, God saved us and called us to a holy calling. Not because of our works, but because of His purpose and grace, which He gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, or before the foundation of the world, which is now been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So gospel preaching is always Preaching is always gospel. It is not our idea. It's not our opinion. It's not our theology. It is divine revelation of God himself who revealed to us the way of salvation. And that is compiled for us in the 66 books of the Bible. There's two main uh, objectives or places where we preach. The first one is the word kerisu, which is preaching or uh, the messenger, and then iongelion, uh, which is the good news yourself. And there's two major themes which you just need to take note of. So kerisu is means uh, common. The most common modifier is gospel, and this is followed closely by Jesus Christ. 
in other words, preach. And then what must be preached? So Kirishu is preaching, but it's always explained what must be preached. So repeat, uh, we preach repentance, we preach forgiveness, we preach the kingdom, we preach Christ alone, we preach Christ crucified, we preach the death and resurrection, we preach eternal life. So preaching with the major topic, so that refers to topical preaching, which is biblical topics which we compiled, and then eogelizu, which means the good news itself. And the objective is that is the kingdom, the word, the gospel, faith, atonement, preach fulfillment. So number three there, the pur purpose of preaching is to inform, to convince and motivate. And we will have a look at that. So what do we inform? We inform them the truth. So just remember in the Old Testament, God said you must love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart. So we have our minds. Our mind is our intellect. So the preaching has to appear to our intellect to make us think. Because many of us are think and our mind patterns are polluted through years of sin and wrong thinking patterns. Which have become the strongholds of the enemies. So we must appear to our thinking process. Right thinking will lead to right behavior. And thinking specifically thinking the things which is from above. Philippians said, think of these things, the things that is beautiful, that is godly, that is uplifting, that is stimulating. So we must think the way of God and not the way of the world or the way of the flesh. So the more we spend meditating on the scripture, Psalms is full of think of the good things of God. So you must fill your mind with divine revelation and that will flood through your heart and it will change your behavior through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convince people through our preaching. So we have a divine partner in our preaching, the invisible witness, the strengthener, the one who convinces people as we preach. He empowers us to preach, but while we preach, he works in the lives of the believers who listen. He convinces them to live more holy lives. He convinces them of sin. For the sinner, he convinces that they are sinners. And then motivate us. Motivate to keep walking in holiness. So we are a speaker and all these mighty powers is working through us to bring change. So we need all these three. We need to inform people, appeal to the mind. We need to convince people, appeal to the heart and motivate people, change their behavior so that they can live and their attitudes, their behavior, their motivation, uh, the way they conduct each other will be changed so that people can see Christ in them. All scripture point to Christ. Remember the story of John 24 as Jesus, uh, after he appeared, after he was raised from the dead, he appeared to the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. And he spoke to them there from verse 44. You can read there on the bottom of page 3. These are my words and I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So that is the intellect. He appealed to the intellect. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. He needs to open the minds so that we can understand it. And he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name beginning in Jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things. So they received, they knew the scripture but they haven't received the Holy Spirit yet so their minds wasn't enlightened so that they can understand it. But if they didn't have the scripture it was hard for the Holy Spirit to work. Think of those unbelievers who have never heard the gospel. The Holy Spirit is working in their lives and preparing them that when the seed of the gospel is sown in their midst, 
He will let that seed grow, but we as his witnesses, we have to go and sow the seeds. On page 4, Paul affirmed this in Ephesians 3. It said, Now has been revealed by his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. You see, the holy apostles refers to the New Testament, the prophets refer to the Old Testament, and by the Spirit, preaching the good news of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Number three, that is why Paul instructs Timothy to preach the good news. All scripture is God-breathed and it is useful for living. Living, uh, it, he said, God is going to judge the living in the dead and the kingdom. And we must continue to preach the good news. John 16 says, when he, referring to the Holy Spirit, the helper comes, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. So what is that? Sin because they do not believe in me. That's very powerful. If you do not believe in Christ, it is sin. Righteousness because I go to the Father and you will no longer see me to do what is right. And judgment because the rulers of this world is judged. Powerful witness that Christ have overcome the evil spirits and they are judged. Spiritual preaching is a matter of taking every text of scripture and revealing Christ. Unbelief is the vanquished by the gospel. Now my dear friends we are going to go through a lot of content and I am going to give that responsibility to you to go through that on your own because by going through this in the class we will never be able to cover the content. So on page 5 You'll see there number three, preaching in Acts. So I'll go through Acts and then I'll just highlight each Bible book in the New Testament, the topic. But it is your responsibility to go with your Bible and reference these verses, read them and see how it applies. So that will be homework before the next class. So first of all, the apostolic witness, it is vital if we are to imitate the apostles in spiritual preaching that we must examine how they preach and what they preach. They are examples and we are the generation after the generation after the generation. We got our gospel through one of the twelve apostles. Each one of you, the person who told you the gospel, the person who told him the gospel and if you go on and on some of you will find, ah, it was John the Baptist. No, sorry. It was John the Apostle, he preached. Or maybe it was Matthew. Or maybe Thomas, he went and he preached in India. And if you may be in Russia, maybe it was through Stephen or it was through Andreas. Or if you're in the Middle East, somehow some Apostle came to you. If you're in Europe, it was probably through Paul. Uh, there's some Apostles who went to Africa. Maybe you are one of those whom the uh, the Ethiopian eunuch got converted on his way in Samaria through the preaching of Stephen. Maybe you are one of those generations. So somehow you preach the gospel and you can learn from those who you heard the gospel from. These messengers we find common themes in preaching to the Jews and the God-fearers. The apostles point to Jesus. So Jesus in the Old Testament and how the, he fulfilled the Old Testament. They were referred to Abraham and to Isaac and to the law. But remember, the Jews were stayed in Israel. They had an Old Testament. They had a long history. But then in Acts, there was a turning point where Paul said, I'm no longer going to preach to the Jews. Peter was the apostle to the Jews. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. And he used a different technique. Because God revealed it to him. He spent three years in the desert where he met Christ. Where Christ manifested himself to Paul as he testified. And through that he got a message and he preached that to the Gentiles. And he would refer to creation. He would refer to sustaining. He would refer to the universal need for forgiveness and the grace of God. Important, some of you might be still living in an area where you identify with a specific nation and in a nation you have tribes and clans 
And here we see the danger of tribalism. So in your area, don't allow tribalism uh, to confine you and grip hold of your mental capacity to preach the gospel. We are not, we don't find our identity in a tribe. We find our identity in Christ and Christ has redeemed us from our tribalism. Even though there's some beautiful things in our culture that is wonderful and we mustn't lose our uniqueness as a human being. And each human nation have a beautiful inheritance which we must treasure. But the gospel is our frame of reference, not our tribe and not our tradition and not our culture. That is human things which we can treasure but we must not worship them and we must not allow that to detect to us because Christ has set us free from every type of bondage and sometimes our culture or our uh, things we are so proud of in our tribe have become idols and stumbling blocks for the gospel. We can see Paul, he preached to the Athenians, they were too religious or different aspects you will see there uh, as you go through the books in the Bible, you see its original uh, town or city had some things they treasured which they need to repent of, like the Ephesians or the Corinthians. They also struggled and that is examples for us. And this will give us effective tools, especially if you work with people from Hindu, Buddhist or Islamic background. There are some beautiful things in uh, Islam. Uh, I've traveled to the Middle East many times and the way the family is constructed is so beautiful. It's so almost what is, I almost, uh, whenever I go there, I sometimes wish I grew up in such a strong family bond. So that is a biblical foundation, but that must not become our act of worship, uh, our culture which God has given us. We will talk about that in evangelism and discipleship and communication we will talk about those topics but you can start thinking of that so peter's sermon pentecost uh there you can see uh you can go through that he talked he talked about the fulfillment of the prophecy he talked about the miracles and death of the resurrection of christ he quoted a lot of scripture which the listeners were familiar with and did he, he called them to repentance and there was a meeting after that where he explained it more fully. Peter's sermon on the porch of Solomon, that's a beautiful uh, story for us. He referred to the God of Abraham and the power of the risen Christ, the fulfillment of the prophecy, call to repentance and the fulfillment of the promise. Then Peter's sermon to the Sanhedrin, the stone that was rejected. There is Peter's sermon to the high priest. There is Stephen's sermon to the high priest and to the council. Philip preaching in Samaria. You can remember that. And then there's the one uh, on page 8, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. He started with what he was known from that piece of scripture he was reading and from there he explained it. Peter and Cornelius, Paul, Barnabas in Antioch. Uh, number K there on page 9, Paul and Silas in Thessalonica, Paul in Athens. So I want you to read that scripture in Acts as you go through that. I will make God known to you. God is the creator and the sustainer. Repentance and resurrection. Response. There you can start seeing explanation, a call to repentance or hitting the mind, the intellect, call to the heart and call to a response. Paul in Ephesians, that was to the Gentiles. Paul in Jerusalem, page 10. Number O, Paul before Felix, Paul before King Agrippa, Paul to the Jewish leaders in Rome on page 12. Then in the, the epistles, I want you to read through this on your own. We're not going to spend time in the class. It will just take too much of our time. But you are a student and you come here to learn, not only to listen to me, but also to do homework and help and self-study. So for self-study, you're going to work through these pages. Preaching revealed through teaching. That's Ephesians. Romans, the John, the, the, uh, the Jews and the Gentile controversy. 
Corinthians, sinful access as freedom. Galatians, the gospel of freedom. Ephesians, gospel ministry. Philippians, joy in affliction. Colossians, true knowledge and righteousness. Thessalonians, encouragement in affliction. Titus, Christ-centered leadership. Hebrews, the supremacy of Christ. And we're going to do one uh, session in Hebrews together. James talks about faith. Peter, God's chosen people. John, that is the letters of John, love of Christ. So my friends, that is the end of this lesson. In conclusion, preaching good news in evangelism and edification. All scripture point to Christ. Preaching in Acts and preaching in the epistles. So make sure you've gone through this. And then I'm going to ask the lecturer to go through lesson number one review before the start of the next lesson. So be blessed. And in the next session, we're going to start with Bible exposition. My God bless you.